Hi, my name is Lars and I'm one of the vacation engineers here at Cat Dimensions. In this little video here, we're going to look at how SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM uh, really can be a good fit for uh, manufacturing also. Um, what, we, what we can do with ePDM is we can, of course, keep our files straight and, and focused, but also we can uh, determine who have access to what, so you don't run into any issues where somebody have uh, have access to files that they should not have access to. So let me just show you here what I'm kind of like going to go over in this little video here. So I created this little state inside of uh, SOLIDWORKS EPDM. We're going to have a CNC programmer log into the vault and uh, create a NC program from our SOLIDWORKS file. It's then going to submit it for approval through this transition here and it's going to go down to the state sitting in pending approval. At this point we're going to log in as the shop supervisor who gets an email notification and uh, he now have the option to either uh, reject the changes or in our case we're going to approve it and it's going to go down this release state. Um, at this point here we're going to have a CNC operator lock into the vault um, who will also get an, an email notification and um, the, the, the kicker is that the CNC operator will not be able to see the NC program until it is in this state. So there's no, uh, you know, he cannot see it until it have gone through, been programmed, and actually been approved. Um, so when we get down here, now it could be DNC to the machine or some, some other way brought to the CNC machine. Uh, we are also going to lock then in as the shop supervisor again and demand the program change, the community design change or something like that, to show you how that then it again is gone from the CNC operator from his access. Uh, this was based on a, on a scenario where a, uh, a shift programmer programs if, if a program sends this out to the manufacturing floor uh, late in the afternoon there is a design change uh, the information is not brought to the B uh, shift uh, operator who ends up running the part costing thousands of dollars uh, where with EPDM it's easy to, to, to draw that kind of stuff back and make sure that nobody sees stuff they should not see because you know things have happened. So let me just show you here uh, what, what we have going on here. So I'm going to log into to, uh, to my vault. Uh, if you're not familiar with EPDM it runs right inside of Windows here. So I can go in and I can log into my vault. Um, actually my vault I'm already logged into it probably logged in as admin so let me just go in here and log off it so now I was gonna log out as the admin and uh, at this point here um, I can now go ahead and uh, and log back in so let's go in here log in and I'm gonna log in as a CNC operator just to show you how things looks from from that perspective. So I'm going to log in as the CNC operator. Log in. My vault is called Safe Deposit Box. Log in here, and I got a folder in here uh, called Manufacturing. And you and you will see so we in Safe Deposit Box main folder Manufacturing. And you can see here that the CNC operator have no, no nothing to pick. You don't see anything because at this point there's nothing that's been released for production. However, if I have a log out as the CNC operator get out of this here and uh, lock back in as the CNC programmer instead go into the same place that's going to be the main folder and into manufacturing you will see that that the programmer can see all kinds of stuff in here right so so this is where you know you can only see what what you are proved to see at, at certain stages so in this case here we got this solid assembly portal plate um, I get a little preview in my e drawings uh, in here so so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna check this out that means I'm taking ownership of this assembly and it will show me uh, what I'm taking ownership of so we got this uh, assembly taking ownership of that um, and then there's also some sub assemblies and some other parts so this means that nobody can mess with this uh, assembly while I'm working in it. I've taken ownership of it. I can now go ahead and open up this assembly in SOLIDWORKS. And uh, here Cat Dimensions, uh, we, we have CAMWORKS. That's what we what we use here. But to, in this video here, it's not really, um, that, that's not really the point. Uh, but I can go ahead here and, and I've already created the tool paths. Uh, that was needed for, for, for making making this pie, part here. And, and then the next step would be to actually post it out as the NC code, right? So I'm going to post it out and I'm going to throw it right back to that same folder, main folder manufacturing. And I can select some kind of an NC code format here. So I'm going to save that back into my folder. 
there we go and then we can get out of oh it opens up in predator uh, here get out of that and we can get out of this file too in SOLIDWORKS now if I go back into my to my vault here you will now see that in my vault I now have that NC program sitting right here right I saved it right back and I still got the ownership as the programmer on it. One other thing I can do in, in, in EPDM that is really handy is I can actually take this CNC program and I can copy it and I can paste it onto the assembly as a reference. What this means is that I'm now set, telling EPDM that this NC program is attached to this assembly. That means that if I go ahead now to give up my ownership and check it in to the vault that is now sitting down here in the bottom attached to it. This can be really handy also if you later on, oh, and I could probably put a comment in here, so programmed NC program, right, or NC code. Um, what could be really handy about pasting this as a reference is that now if a designer or an engineer later on tries to check out this assembly, they will see that that program is attached and they might know that, whoa, you know, we can't just make changes, there's some NC code involved with this too. Now when I've checked this back into the vault, I'm kind of like done with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the, um, on the uh, NC code here and I'm going to change the state to submit for approval. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to uh, take and, and submit that for approval here and I got to put a comment in here. So I'm going to say please approve to run on B shift, right? Put that in here and send that off its way. So now as the CNC programmer, uh, I went in here and I created that uh, I created that program and I have now submitted it for approval. So now it's coming into this state here where uh, we're going to log out of the vault as the CNC programmer. Right? Get out of here. And you will see that it actually kicks me right out of the uh, right out of the vault view because I'm not logged in anymore, right? So it's literally right out here. Now I can log in as the shop supervisor. So let me log back in here. So that's going to be the shop supervisor. Now, of course, in normal life, you wouldn't be locking in and out. There would be on another computer, right? And all this stuff would be kind of like happening on the fly here. But as I'm locking back in as my as my shop supervisor, come in here to uh, my manufacturing folder. You can see that again as a shop supervisor. Of course, I got access to everything. And if I go down here and look at my notification field in my inbox, you will actually see that uh, that email is sitting in there about uh, approve it from the CNC programmer. Uh, this could also be set up to just come right out in your Outlook or something like that if you're using that. But when I come in here, I can now, of course, open up the part file and check it and make sure that it looks good or the NC program. And I can now, again, approve it or I could reject it. So we're going to approve it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead here and just leave a note for the CNC operator. Right, and uh, when we get to this point, it's always a mad dash, right? So get it going, get the program going, please. So I have now sent this off to through the uh, the cycle, and now it's sitting down and it's ready to be run. So um, let's log out as the shop supervisor here. Log out of the vault, just like that. Uh, so now we can see that we we have now we logged in as this shop supervisor. We approved this, so now it's sitting down in this release state right so now if we log in uh, as the cnc operator again like we did the first thing so let's go in here and that was the operator log into our vault and go into manufacturing we will now see that that program is now visible because now this is in release state right so this would be now where he can open it up and, and he can go out and he can send a DNC or something like that if need be, right, and get it, get it, get it going. So, so how it goes through the workflow can make sure that the CNC operator only sees what he needs to see. Now, if there is a change in, uh, so let me log off of the CNC operator. If there is a change um, in, in, your, in your design or product or something like that, and, you know, it's maybe the CNC operator is not in, in the B shift yet, it's maybe you know, four o'clock in the afternoon, we can then, as the shop supervisor, go in here and make that program change. So uh, let's log in as the shop supervisor again. Because all these names are completely customizable, right? 
So I'm gonna log into my vault here and go in here, main folder, and into our manufacturing. And I'm not gonna right click on this file here and change the state to NC program change. Right? So at this point here I get another box up here and I can say something like um, that could be a design change or something like that. And I can even have different boxes for different people and notify the CNC operator if I wanted to, if he was already aware that it was in the release state, or I could just leave it blank, right? So now I'm changing the state on that, what means that now, um, if everything works the way it's supposed to, that when we log in as the um, CNC operator, because now we are in this state, the CNC operator don't have access to see it. But it's actually now sitting up here again where the CNC programmer would have access to it. So let's log in as the CNC operator and make sure that he not uh, are capable of running this program uh, by mistake. Go in here, log into the vault, and log back into our main folder, manufacturing. And again, we're back to the point where he cannot see anything. So EPDM, besides it can do a bunch of things, searches, very uh, complex searches and, and stuff like that, but even from a from a standpoint of um, of CAM and, and, and NC code and other file formats, SolidWorks EPDM can really be helpful, uh, and I think especially for, for manufacturing where there's a lot of stuff going on, right, a lot of communication going back and forth. So I really hope you find this video helpful. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate contacting us, and I hope you have a good day. Thank you.